Welcome to Home Cinema and Tech Review. In this video, I'm going to teach you how important to choose the right throwing ratio for your potential ultra short throw projector purchase. And behind me, let me just close the light. Behind me, we got two different projectors. This is not a picture in picture. This is two different projectors projecting two different size, very different size images. One is Epson LS650 above 2.5K price. Okay, 2000, around $2,500, I guess. It's a 4K 3 LCD projector, with, which is a very powerful projector. And the, on the other hand, we got Optoma Photo & Go that I reviewed early in the channel. This is a palm of my size, uh, palm size device, right now powered from battery, not wall plugged. And it has 6, 650 uh, ansu lumen real power uh, triple laser device. So right now, which one do you think is throwing the bigger image? Most of the time people will probably say the Epson will throw the bigger image. Yes, when you pull it out, it is. But technically, right now the Epson is delivering around 80 inches roughly. And the picture of the Optoma Photo Go is about 120 scale. I am speaking roughly. I have also my meter. I'm going to tell you the numbers. So let's do that in a, in a quick sense. So this screen is 177 centimeters. So we can call it above 75-ish to going 80. But when you count down to the Optoma, Optoma screen size, I know it's not scientific, but it's about 270. So it is above 120 range. It's going to the 130, 130 inch scale. So what you're seeing is right now huge difference. And it's also showing you how could 80 inch size will be extremely small compared to 120 plus 130 inch ish image. That's one other reason. Don't look at the brightness levels because the Epson is too bright. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to close first of all the ambient light. The, by the way, this video is auto exposed. So you're not going to see this much of a bad contrast with the projectors with your eyesight. So I'm closing the ambient light. No ambient light right now. What I'm going to do, I'm going to take a bl bl black cloth okay fully black cloth to close the Epson so this is the Optoma and the camera is adjusting by the way if you're wondering Optoma has a full HD resolution not a 4k projector this is a budget friendly compared to the Epson around $800 projector it's not 2k two and a half K maybe so let's take a look what our resolution is yes it is full HD so technically they are delivering similar video from YouTube both of them are running internally so let me just get you close to explain why this is important the reason this is important don't get the pink image fool you because triple laser devices could create pinkish image it's about the camera sensor not about the projector so it could happen along the way lines this is an auto exposed video i'm going to try to keep this video short as possible the main point of choosing the right throwing ratio most of the time when people think people think for long throw projectors for the placement at the back and also people think about the short throw projectors because people have to put it inside middle of the room or put it up high to the ceiling of course short throw ratios are solving a big problem of creating a big picture in a small room that's another plus but you have to put your ultra short throw projector onto a place whether it's a ground with alr screen without alr screen you have to do the cabling and you have to place it on a TV unit like this if you're going to place some setup like me. Just ultra short throw, TV unit, and that's it. So let's cl get close how much importance there is about it. So I'm going to take the light and we're going to go to the side of the picture. So right now, I'm going to get the picture low as possible angle. So I'm trying to be yeah I'm doing my best to put a light so for better explanation this is Epson LS let's by the way let's open up the Epson so we can have more light in the video when 
you see a throw ratio of an ultra short throw projector it means from optical element not the behind of the projector but take a look at good look at the product description many of the brands also put uh, the distance between the projectors bottom end or back end where you place it to the wall so you have to know this distance and you have to understand the depth of the projector this is Epson LS650 it's a big device but many of the high brightness level high we can't tell this one is the highest end but technically this is not an entry level device it's a 4k and it's a big device with a Yamaha speaker so it gets the job done watch my full review of both of them to understand what they deliver but main point of this video is this device is roughly speaking 40 centimeters has its own depth but from the wall right now we have the distance of 16 centimeters so my tv unit is 45 centimeters it's a already 40 centimeter device so i can't pull it out without an additional sliding custom table that is designed motorized or non-motorized to slide it outside of the tv unit so that adds another space between the projector and the tv unit and creates a height about it so this is the thing that you have to know and they when they explain the throw ratio and when you look at the throw ratio of the projector if you don't see the screen sizes most of the projectors companies do that but you have to understand the distance between the optical element and the wall let's just think about it is 46 centimeters right now but if you talk about the distance between the projector and the wall is about 16 centimeters 46 and 16 so you got like another 30 centimeters from the back of the device to the optical element so you have to understand your throw ratio and there will be a guide if you want to watch under the description of this video what is the throwing ratio how it's calculated so if you understand that simple explanation video there is no problem you can choose whatever ultra short throw that you want to buy but I made an early video about uh, in the channel um, that helps to understand even better let me just adjust the camera height so we can go around here a little bit above something like this so let me just go back a little bit more yeah you I think you'll get enough of an idea with this much of an angle let's just correct the camera angle yeah here we are so I don't want to keep you too long so if I pull out the projector so we got a throwing angle like this like a triangle your problem will be if I pull it out your image will go even higher so it it is if you have a certain amount of ceiling height it could hit the ceiling so let me just do a little bit movement okay so I have to close the close the Epson for easy of understanding so if I push the optima forward as you can see image also goes lower okay so the distance between the projector and the image is getting shorter so this is the main point that you have to be careful about it so something like this Epson you have to pull it up a lot more so if you want to achieve 120 150 you got to pull it way back like I made a dedicated video about it when I used on the floor with the floor rising USD LR screen so you got a space like probably 30 to 40 centimeters I'm speaking roughly for 120 and that gets the image even higher so device like this is very important I am not saying Optimo for Hongo is a better projector than the Epson of course Epson is way better when it comes down to the price it's a lot higher three times the price of this one it's 4k it's a lot brighter it's probably six times even more brighter than the Optoma but this is a battery powered small device but it solves a big problem so as you can see let me just show you okay I'm going to get down and I don't want to waste the entire battery of the camera it's going even worse so I'm going to close the Epson to getting rid of the rest of the problems and I'm going to close the video light so this is the Optoma and we are all alone with it so if I push the Optoma let me just rotate the angle it's just doing its thing and as you can see it's really right now near touching the let's just do it near touching the wall so technically what happens right now you got a very short throw short 
ultra short throw projector i know i'm repeating the stuff so this is why this matters if you can buy a short throw, throw ultra short throw projector i know it sounds a little difficult when i say it like this but you will have the advantage of put it in the between of somewhere and get the image size right for example right now it's giving the same level of size with the epson when i place it in the middle of the tv unit and even closer to the wall so this gives you a quite a bit of flexibility when you want to move the projector on a tv unit the last thing that i want to repeat is let me just check out the battery of the camera the distance between the tv unit and the wall right now it's six centimeters i push the tv unit quite a lot but still there is a little bit of bay uh, space that I can push it even further so if you don't want too much of a gap like keeping things slim slick like an OLED TV pushed on a wall kind of setup very clean setup without showing any cables I think you need to be more careful about your throw ratio of your ultra short throw projector when you want to choose one so this video was just another guide I, I have also reviewed the Optimo Photo Go and Epson LS650. I love both of them. They are different devices, so I'm not comparing each one of them like one is good, one is bad. But technically, two good devices with the very different specs. You should be choosing what you need. I hope to see you in the next video. If you learn anything, don't forget to like, subscribe, and hype the videos if you can. There's a hype button. It's a free. You just spend some hype points to the videos and channel. I hope to see you in the next video. Until the next video, bye from Home Cinema and Tech Review and Hoşçakalın from Istanbul, Turkey. Bye, guys.